Hello Lizzie here and today I'm going to show you how to make opal which is my set of three hearts. Now I've been wanting to do this for ages and ages but I wanted it to be something that was a little bit different from just three plain hearts in a row. So what I've done is I've done some chenille work. Now you may not have come across chenille work before, you may have done and they're never going to the hang straight are they but the front of the actual hearts themselves are multiple layers of fabric when you when you look up the word opal and I explain actually on the front of the pattern an opal is made up of lots of iridescent layers so that was my starting point if you like for making the chenille work for these hearts and if we just have a quick look at on the overhead you can see how that works There's, so this is five layers you've got a, a sort of a, a back backing fabric which is just plain calico or a muslin um, and then you've got multiple layers of different colours of fabrics um, and also if you have a little pop of colour in there then it really stands out so I've got like a sort of an orangey colour in there I've got some more batiks different shades and then the bottom layer is a pattern fabric as well so it doesn't you don't when your eye goes into it it's not a plain fabric it's all going on and the more you ruffle it and the more you work at it and, and sort of manipulate it the greater it looks the better it looks so my hearts are not just plain they are made from chenille work which and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that I think they look glorious um, and then and this time instead of doing heart um sorry instead of doing put um reds I'm doing purpley colours which is quite different isn't it so this is opal um, set of three hearts now the backs are constructed slightly differently so we don't have the turning gaps on the side of the hearts the turning gap is at the back and the heart at the back is made in two halves you've got all the pattern pieces there in the pattern so there's nothing to guess nothing to measure everything is done for you oh and don't forget that this is a downloadable pattern on my website lizzycurtis.com so head over there download the pattern and then you can start making it and following this video instruction tutorial so let's pop that to one side so the first thing you need to do is to create a square of 10 inches it's it's plenty of fabric to make these particular three hearts your grounding fabric your background fabric uh, is plain it's a, it's like a foundation piece if you like you're not going to see it it's basically so we can draw on it stitch on it and we can see it it's very visual so it's calico or muslin or a white cotton something that you're going to be able to see the lines on that you're going to draw and then you've got I've got uh, four more layers of fabric so my my sort of pop of color is that orange and that's going to be your base layer that's what you're going to see all the way through I've then got a plain purple which matches the plain purple of the back of the of the hearts then I've got if I can split these fabrics up then I've got a like a it's it's not a batik but it looks like batik and then I've got this amazing um, sort of uh, harlequin design if you like so the first thing you need to do and if I hold it up to the camera you'll see and you'll see a lot of it I've already stitched but you need to draw diagonal lines so from point to point so don't go across your fabric or up and down go diagonally that way we get the diagonals on the heart and you, it's easy to place and cut um, and you're going to draw lines with your heat erasable pen actually you could use any pen but we get used to using heat erasable air erasable water erasable so if we look on the overhead you'll be able to see that you start from here you're drawing your lines all the way along there is half an inch between each line so you'll be able to see when you're drawing this that half an inch between each of those lines okay so you're going to go right across and you can see here this is where I'm going to stitch now so you can see how that's done and because we're using multiple layers what I suggest you do before you actually so draw the lines then pin it make sure that you pin it well get all those pins in there to hold all your layers together and use a walking foot if you can and that stop, stops all the layers from moving the other little tip is because we're going to use a chenille tool which I'll show you in a sec I'm doing a back stitch here and a back stitch here and that gives the beginning of the seam rigidity um, and it just helps when you're putting that tool in and ripping those seams open honestly it's great fun so I'm just going to pop this under the machine now um, I've got a contrasting uh, uh, yeah a contrasting thread to what you can see here so 
I'm not going to use a cream thread on the top of here. It's just I might as well just have the thread in there that I'm going to stitch the whole hearts together with. But I'm going to change the bobbin because in the bobbin I've got a sparkly thread and that sparkly thread, I don't know if we can see this, but it actually is in the bobbin and that's what's going to show. I mean, I'm just trying to see whether you can see it. Possibly not. Um, but it's the bobbin thread that's the one that you're going to see. So if you want, like me, um, use a sparkly thread or something quite special, variegated particularly, then it goes in the bobbin because we are stitching on our calico, on our scrap piece of fabric. You're not going to see this. This is not the, the last layer. You do not cut right down to this layer. Um, in fact, as we go along, you'll see which ones we cut into and it's only the top three layers and it says that quite clearly in the pattern so the foundation piece which is what I'm stitching now and the orange which is that bottom layer I'm not cutting um, if you do cut it it's not um, the end of the world you just want to make sure that you don't cut the foundation piece otherwise you'll end up with strips of fabric because <laughs> This tool is really sharp. So I've cut, um, sorry, I've, I've stitched all my lines all the way through from top to bottom. I haven't bothered about these little top bits. We're not going to use them. Um, and at the front, oh, it just looks lovely. And, and I know you're not going to be able to pick it. Oh, just slightly, you can see that sparkle. And what we've done is we've made half inch channels. Now, if you haven't got a chenille tool, and there's loads on the internet, I looked before I did started this video, um, if you haven't got one, they're fairly inexpensive to buy, but you could use really tiny embroidery scissors. I'm just looking for mine because you're, you've only got half inch channels. So you want to make sure that you can get in there with small scissors. Um, it won't be quite as efficient as this, but it can still be done. But don't forget, we're, cut, we're cutting multiple layers here. So what you need to do, I would suggest you start in the middle, start where you like, but I start in the middle and you want to get your tool in that channel. And like I say, I do not want to cut my orange layer and I don't want to cut the foundation piece. So I'm ignoring those first two layers. I'm actually only cutting the top three. And what you're going to do is you're going to start off. Now you might find that first little bit tricky. And this is why I've backstitched those um, seams because you're going to tug at them a bit and you're just literally holding this. Once you've got it a little way, you can hold that seam and you're just pushing it through. OK, you're just pushing it through. And as long as your blade is nice and sharp, it'll cut. So again, we're just watching to make sure that we're not cutting that bottom two layers. Start it off, like I say, you could start it off with a pair of scissors and then put your tool in. You're holding that edge and you're cutting down. And you're trying to keep that tool in the center. And what it's doing, it's cutting you like sort of exactly a quarter of an inch either side of the seam. So it's a case of just popping it in, getting it going and pushing along that seam. Um, and you just continue, I'm just checking to make sure we are not cutting that bottom layer. And you just continue until you've done the whole piece. And like I say, just that first little piece is always a little tricky. And like I say, make sure you've got a nice blade, nice sharp blade. Right, so I'll go ahead and cut through all of those and I'll come back to you and see the finished result. So I've cut all the way through and actually I did find it quite easy to get my scissors and cut that first half an inch and then go in with the tool. I found that a little bit easier. Now it look, doesn't look much different, but actually if I ruffle it and I don't want to ruffle it too much because I want this to actually stay flat until I've completed the hearts. But if I ruffle it, if you have a look on the overhead, if I ruffle it, you can see that fabulous orange coming out underneath. And the more I ruffle it, the more the other layers will come as well. Do you see there's the lighter layer there and then we've got the plain one there and actually when I've and when I've completed the hearts I will actually use my iron and actually fluff all those up with my iron to get them so they're really um, sort of folded and bent and creased I suppose and manipulated 
so you can see all those colours pop through. But until then, <laughs> I'm going to keep them flat because I want to cut this flat and I want to stitch it flat. So it kind of remains, you, you wouldn't know any different. If I flip it over, I've already drawn two of the hearts on there quite sketchily. You do get the pattern pieces, so you get, do get those pattern pieces. So it's just the last one I was going to draw around just so you can see. Now, um, if when you cut these, um, you lose some of the fabric because of the way we've cut and the way we've stitched, blah, blah, blah. Um, don't worry, because the, the most amount you can lose is a quarter of an inch, which is your seam allowance. So by the time you've stitched them together, and I think I show this in the pattern actually, how it looks, if some pieces do drop off the side. Um, I'm just going to see if there's any on here that I would see straight away. So this piece here could easily drop away but you'll you'll see that as we go along how that works um, so from the back I'm going to cut now don't forget we're cutting five layers of fabric here guys so there's a lot of pressure on your scissors so make sure you've got lovely lovely sharp scissors um, again I'm roughly cutting these you'll cut them a lot lot neater than me I'm just trying to do this quickly so you can see and there we are, Look, there's a piece coming away now and I'm going to show you that because I don't want you to be worried about it because your seam allowance will cover anything up that's missing. So when we turn it over, look, I want you to see that. That's not too bad, I'll keep that as it is. But that piece there is missing, but your seam allowance is going to allow for that. So the, the most amount you're going to cut away is, is a quarter of an inch, which is, I suppose, quite convenient, really. So we've got small, medium and large hearts. So these are obviously the fronts. I think they look gorgeous. Um, I like the red, but also I like to experiment with other colours as well, and you might too, um, and do something so it matches your home. And obviously you could fill these with potpourri and oils, that sort of thing, and your stuffing. You need some sort of toy stuffing to finish these off. I'll quickly show you the backs, because the backs are where we're going to stuff. And it's our turning gaps, if you like. And there's a certain way, and you'll look at the pictures in the instructions, you'll think, how on earth? What on earth are you doing? Because I feed bits through and all sorts, but we'll see as we go along. Now look, we've got some nice little bit of scrap there, which is all chenille, so don't, don't throw that away. That could be used for a piece of patchwork, I think. So. Let's just clear the decks. So now we've got three pieces um, cut out. And like I say, you might lose some bits, you might not. Um, it's interesting because you might have wanted the, the diagonals to go the other way. Uh, it makes no difference. But you can see when we ruffle them, how amazing they're going to look. So these are the backs for them. Let's get those in order. And these are the backs. So one, two, three. So if you have a look at this one, this is the medium size one. It's two halves and I've stitched from the top down to, a, it's about an inch. And then I've left a gap and I've stitched about an inch on, on the bottom half. And I've, I've split those seams open. So I've, I've ironed this open. I've ironed it flat, as you can see. And that, you can see, is my turning gap there. You see that. So we're going to start with the small heart. Now you'll have cut your ribbon to size. I've given you the dimensions for the ribbon and you need two pieces for your first heart. And the first one is going to make a tail. So if we look at the original one, just so you know what I'm talking about, you're going to make a little tail here and then you're going to put the ribbon in that joins from the small to the, to the medium. So it always goes inside the heart. So whatever, whichever way you do it, so just bring those ends together of the ribbon and um, we'll need a little pin and just pop the tail into the point of the, the ribbon like that. OK, so we've got our little um, loop going on there. And then we want to put this piece on, which is your joining strip between the small heart and the medium heart. And again, let's pop a pin in. I'm not a fan of pins and they will come out almost immediately. And if you want to, you could kind of do it the other way around. So let's do that because then I can pop them out more easily when I'm stitching. But it's nice to get them in place. So I'm going to do the same for the tail if I can. Bear with. 
So I'll pop the, I mean that's where I'm going to start stitching so it won't last in there very long. And try to get them in the points, you know, the point of the heart and the, and the V of the heart. So there's your joining piece of ribbon right in the centre there and there's your little tail. So just make sure that they don't get stitched in the seam. So just poke that round in there, loop it round. And then it's right sides together like that and we're going to stitch from that point all the way around back to that point and turn through so I'm going to do that stitching now so I've changed my regular foot changed my bobbin so it's not sparkly thread <laughs> and quarter of an inch seam allowance little back stitch and you're just going to make sure that all of this fits together beautifully um, but don't uh, don't worry if those you know those pieces that might have um, uh, been we you know where you cut it and I said to you you're going to lose some of those pieces because the way we've cut and the way we've stitched don't worry about that um, just tuck those in as you go so again I'm just going to hold on to that ribbon and put my needle right into the V right into the point come around and you might want to, in fact, I don't know if I've got them handy, but my pinking shears are really good for trimming off curves like this. And obviously you can snip into the, the heart, um, you know, into the V and into the point. So let's just get my pinking shears and trim a lot of this fabric away go all the way around because the, the pink and shears are great for this. It takes a lot of the bulk away. Be careful when you get to that point. We're going to use our scissors just to go into that point. Um, if you haven't got pink and shears, just trim some of the layers away anyway. Because don't forget, think about all those layers that you've stitched. Um, I have got a bin, but I'm probably missing it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to cut across the point and I'm going to cut into the, the V of the heart to give just give it a fighting chance and then I'm going to just snip some of that away so take some of that bulk away and actually there's a really good photograph in the pattern that shows you exactly what that looks like so a quick mention about my gold club if you haven't joined already there's no time like the present just pop to my website find the link that says gold members sign up here and then you have access to my facebook weekly events which is absolutely amazing my girls love it and of course you get the free patterns as well so if you want more information there is actually a video on youtube that you can have a little look at There we go. So now I've stitched all of that. Fairly happy with how that looks. So I can turn that through. So let's just do that. Don't worry too much about getting all your points and your curves beautiful at this point. I mean, do it by all means, but don't, don't worry too much about it because we'll do that at the end when we come to stuff it. So just bring that all out. Okay, so I've turned that all through. I'm not too worried about my curves at this stage because like I say the toy stuffing will push all those out. So I've got my tail attached and well my tail here attached and my joining piece of ribbon attached. So now we need to get our medium size heart. Now this is this is going to be the interesting bit. For first of all, we need to put a ribbon in to join our medium to our large. So again that goes into the tip. So I'll just get that in place and I'll put a pin through it just to hold it there just momentarily. And just overlap that by a little about eighth of an inch so you've got a nice little bit of tail of the ribbon sticking out uh, from the top of the heart you just see it there the little tail of the ribbon there okay but we need to make sure that our, li our little baby heart <laughs> sits underneath so if i put that on the overhead you can see that that's how it wants to sit it wants to join onto that bit um, so i'm going to just fold this over so the wrong side faces me and make sure my ribbon is nice and straight. I'm going to pin that in place. Let's, get, let's find a pin and just hold that just for a moment. Because I don't worry about these little bits, they all get stitched in. In fact, let me make that tail a little bit longer. Just pull that down a bit. 
there we go, happy with that. Hold on, just pull that over a bit, there we go. And just give that a pin, that's it. And this is going to be the interesting bit. And in the photo, I think I make it fairly clear. It's right sides together. But what I want you to do is actually bring your heart through there so it's out of the way. You could keep it folded inside there quite neatly. But to stitch around those seams of that little bit of bulk is a bit much. So what I did was I actually took it through the gap. OK. So I've just pulled that little heart through. I don't know if you can see. There's the turning gap of the medium heart. They haven't, they haven't been joined together yet. They're still loose, loose layers. But it's much easier to stitch this whole thing with the heart on the outside rather than tucked in the inside, which is what you would naturally think. I've turned my pin around so my pin is facing out this time uh, because I want to just catch that first with my machine. So I just want to catch that ribbon. Um, obviously, I don't want to catch this other one that's poking around in there. So don't forget we did the tail top and bottom on this. So just bringing those points together. I'm just going to take my pin away, hold it nicely and start stitching from that top, that, that um, the tip, if you like, the point of the heart. And just give it a nice back stitch so it's nice and secure. And then what you're doing is just coming around the sides of that heart again, quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can see your little heart. It's nice. It just keeps it out of the way. You see the pops of orange, I think, can't you? It's lovely. Just work your way around the heart again, pivot and turn your fabric um, and just coming up to now the point to the V of the heart and I'm taking my pin out, hoping my ribbon stays put. You can also put a little bit of quilter's tape there just to hold it. I'm going to give it a little back stitch just to make that lovely and strong on the point of the heart and again a little back stitch there. Don't go over the, the V, just keep to the, the shape. Come all the way around and just bring those pieces together. Get the little heart out of the way. <laughs> it does work really well. Little back stitch there to hold everything together. And then get your pinking shears and just trim all that back again. Um, and take all those layers down. Like I said, there's an awful lot of fabric. What is it? Six layers of fabric now that you're cutting through. And these these pink and shears are, you know, they're quite strong. I think they're built to be, you know, used and abused. Let's put it that way. So then you're coming round the other side of the heart. And and using the pink and shears means that you don't have to clip into your your sort of curved seams here. So just move the little heart out of the way. Come down. Let's get rid of all the bits. Put them in my Ava. Covered in bits now. <laughs> and so there's our medium heart done with our little baby one sticking out. Um, so just cut the tip off again. Be careful you don't cut too much. And just cut into that V again. Again, not too much. Just just be careful. Um, it's not that crucial. It has to be super duper because of the way it puff out, puffs out. So there we are. So once again, we've got our pieces and we're going to turn that through. Now, when you do the um, opening and the turning gap on the back of the, the hearts, do do a locking stitch. Make that, you know, where you stop and start, just make that really strong because we're going to push all this through. And I'm not sure I did do mine as strong as I would have liked, but just take your time. Don't rush. There's no rush. Just turn this all through. There we go. It's coming. There we go. And then once you get to a certain stage, you can get your... Um, turning tools, your, you know, whatever gadgets you may have to hand and um, pop them in there and just work those curves. Again, I shouldn't worry too much because your stuffing is going to make that looking look beautiful. So there's our second heart. I'm not too, too fussed about that. I can push all those out a little bit later. Pull down your point and as long as you've stitched that in beautifully, all that double stitching you're doing, that back stitching will secure that ribbon. 
So there's our second, our medium heart with a, with a tail. And uh, like I say, it needs a little bit of pushing those curves. I'm going to ignore it because the stuffing will do that. <laughs> it's tempting to, to really make it beautiful. Anyway, there's our medium heart done. So now we work, go on to our large heart. This is the final one. Now that we need a nice big loop. So I've given you the measurements of what the ribbons or the size of ribbons you need to cut. So again, I'm just going to pin that into the top of the heart, just taking it out a little bit by about an eighth of an inch outside the the heart let me just it might be easier if i show you on the overhead what i mean by that so you've got a little tail sticking out if i do it that way we can probably see a little bit better the tail of the ribbon there and like i say don't don't worry about these loose pieces here you you might find them a little bit distracting if you do stitch them down but by the time you've stitched around here a quarter of an inch these will be part of the seam allowance anyway so we could cut those away just so they're not distracting um, it's not going to make a jot of difference so there's our hanging loop and once again we've got the, the the back of the heart to go on like so so we need the tail of our medium heart to come up here and again, I'm, I'm just going to turn that around because I want to put a pin in there, but I want to put the pin so it's the head side facing out because that's easier for me when I, um, that's, a, that's a bent pin, that one will have to go in the bin. Um, and just make sure that again, you stick the tail of the ribbon over the edge of your, the point of your heart, just by an eighth of an inch. So you're well and truly stitching that ribbon into the seam. And like we did before, let's turn it around so it makes a bit of sense like we did before i know this sounds a bit weird but but push all of these through and i could have done it with a bigger turning gap but we'll, we'll work on it so bring all these hearts through that turning gap nothing has been stitched yet that back of that heart is still a loose piece of fabric but what that means is that you've got no bulk sitting in the middle of that heart um, getting in the way basically so that there's our two pieces let's just try and get them so they make sense so there's the back and the front of our big heart and there's <laughs> our two little hearts sticking outside the turning gap it just just doesn't look attractive does it but it gets them right out of the way when you're stitching all of this can be pushed out of the way and we start from that point and we work around so let's do that and pop it under the machine. I think you'll find that once you've done these once, you'll understand how that system works, how easy it is, because I could have left all of those, those two little hearts inside and then turned through, but it adds a lot of bulk. And I tried to think of a way that we could, we could just eliminate all that bulk let's just stitch around again take your time I'm going to take the pin out of the the ribbon put my finger there so it doesn't move let's hope back stitch nice and strong holding that ribbon in place and then again back stitch nice and strong around the the heart and as we go around all these other hearts can keep out of the way and just bring it all up nice back stitch on that point there to really stitch that ribbon in place that that's the main thing because that's going to go through a lot of work so again just trim and it'll crunch its way through and don't forget like i said we've got lots of layers going on here but it's such a great effect like I say, I've wanted to do the three hearts in a row. It's pretty traditional for ages, but I wanted it to be something a little bit more perhaps challenging um, and a little bit different. So nearly cut all these layers through. Like I say, if you haven't got pink and shears, please don't worry about it. Just try and cut those layers down a little bit so you've got less bulk. So with the point, we'll just snip that away. And again, I'll snip into the top there just a little bit and take some of that fabric away. 
so we've got a fairly decent point but by the time you've stuffed it it kind of um, pales into insignificance so this is where we're going to turn and I think my turning gap's a little bit too small but we'll see how we get on uh, yes, yeah, so like I said, don't stint on that part and make sure you do a back stitch so it's really strong. Um, it just helps with the hand stitching. To, to close these gaps, we're doing a ladder stitch, which is super easy. Um, do look it up if you don't know what that looks like. Um, I'm not going to waste your time by watching me doing a ladder stitch, um, but that's the technique. And uh, certainly if you're part of my gold group, my online sewing group, this is the sort of thing that we would go through on a Thursday night Facebook Live where I would perhaps show them how to do a ladder stitch. Things crop up, you know, they ask me questions about the patterns, which they're listening now. Um, and if, for instance, one of the ladies doesn't quite know how to do a ladder stitch properly, that's what we cover on, on a Thursday night. So look, there's all my hearts. Let's untwist the ribbon. That's it. So, and that one. There we go. Um, so all three hearts done. I knew that was going to twist. <laughs> I'm going to try and hold it. There we go. So it's just a case of stuffing. Now I'll stuff one, and then I'll show you a picture of them all completed. So what I always use, toy stuffing, um, I do actually like a cotton stuffing, but I don't have any to hand today. I've just got regular polyester toy stuffing. Um, and if you wanted to, you could put a few drops of oil on this, like um, an orange oil or um, lavender oil, just a few little drops. Otherwise, it may come through on your fabric. Just work it into your stuffing and it will smell delicious. I'm almost imagining it. And then I always use hemostats or you know, they're like... Um, like medical things, hemostats, look them up. Um, but it, it grabs my stuffing, it allows me to push it in and, and I grab it out of the, the packet and I just use my hemostats, um, opening them, closing them on the stuffing and it pushes them right into the, the shape of the hearts. Really super easy. So if you haven't got any of these, I'm grabbing it and pushing it in. It's a top tip of mine especially when you're having to stuff something, to use um, something like these. There's really, you can't beat it. So even the great big piece like this, I've got it on the end of my hemostats there, nice pretty pink hemostat, and just pushing those in. This is what's, I don't know about the pink ones, but it's what surgeons use, isn't it, to hold back bits and bobs. Don't think about it. Best not to think about it. Um, so yes, yeah, stuff it as, as much as stuffing as you require. Um, don't forget to stuff near the back as well where you're going to have the turning gap. So I'm just going to do this one heart so we get an idea and then I'll finish these and I'll post a picture. I'll, I'll see if we can get a, a photograph of that onto this video. But certainly you'll see it um, anyway on social media and around and about so that's not too bad I probably put a little bit more in but you can see how that looks this look glorious isn't it but the main thing now is to get the iron on this now obviously I will have stuffed them all I would have ladder stitched them closed all right so we're kind of jumping ahead a bit but I just want to show you what I do all right it looks a little bit sort of mean and nasty <laughs> So we just wait for the iron to heat up. But we want all of these layers to really move. We want them to be raggedy looking. We want them to be, we want to try and see some of the other colours that are going on. Because that orange is so super popping off there. So get your the, the point of your iron in there and work it in. See if you can split those layers up. It's not, it's not easy to do this quickly. Um, but it's just working those and getting them so it opens them up. And if you want to, you could get a brush on this and brush it so they're more frayed. And, and honestly, it takes a little while. So I'm going to do this in like a minute, but spend five or ten minutes doing this. Because you're using a hot iron, it permanently presses them open. 
and uh, I'm liking what I see, to be honest. I'll leave that for the moment because I could just go on forever. So if I hold it up now, there we are. So you can see that orange colour coming through. And if I work at it a bit more, you'll see some of the other layers. So the plain purple, there's a light mauvey sort of batiki fabric in there. And it just needs a little bit of something warm, a little bit more manipulation. And that then makes you this, which is our finished product. And of course, you could hang those from a door handle or a hook on the back of the door or wherever you want to have a little bit of soft craft decoration. Don't forget to put your essential oils in your stuffing. Look at that, they're lovely. Ladder stitch to finish and you're done. But you've got a hanging handle here and then you've just got something just matches at the other end. Put some beads on there as well, that would look nice. So there we are, so that is opal and a uh, really lovely technique using the chenille work to get that beautiful ruffled look amazing isn't it really amazing um so yes yeah, so don't forget go to my website lizzycurtis.com this is actually a downloadable pattern on the website pdf so it's worldwide wherever you are you can download a pdf full pictures and full written instructions plus this amazing video so that's opal i hope you make loads